210 acres on the side of the old Brooklyn Waterworks, home to 600 horses, the best sight lines in the Big Apple. It is Aqueduct Racetrack, half century old. We're still going strong. We're settled in on this December 31st, 2014. We're glad you're with us. The MIG, Richard Migliori, back from vacation. Jason Blewett alongside Clubhouse Studios as we close out the year here in the Big Apple. And it's good to be back, just to get back in the groove of things, get back into the exciting racing, stuff that happened today, things that are going to go on the rest of this weekend. It's good to be back in the studio with you. At a first ever live draw on this show, we've got a raffle coming up regarding the, uh, the uh, breeding season of Frost Giant, which we'll talk about and explain a bit later in the uh, broadcast. A complete December 31st recap, a day we ran a couple of stakes for the state breads, a lot of good over the next 30 minutes here on MSG Plus. But we begin with a look back, if you will, at the, uh, at the, the year's top connections in New York on the Naira circuit. Erod Ortiz Jr., what a season. What a season. Just incredible. Not only the leading rider on the New York circuit for the entire year, but over $20 million in purses. And his brother had a pretty good year as well. Over 500 wins combined between both Ortiz boys, who are both natives of Puerto Rico. Erod's 22, Jose is 21. Jose wound up winning four races here on this New Year's Eve program. Over 34 million combined in purses. The future is very bright. And we go back to one of Erod's, one of uh, his biggest uh, wins all season long with Sweet Reason in the Grade One Test. I think Sweet Reason had a big part in Erad's development as a rider. I think he learned how to ride a really good horse because of her. He rode her coolly in the acorn. He rode her extra cool in the test. And I really think this was kind of the horse that brought him to the forefront, not just in other people's minds, but in his own mind that he can win big races. And think about the job Steve Rushing has done with E. Rod Ortiz Jr. Was the longtime agent to Ramon Dominguez, and we're glad Ramon's healthy and doing okay, but he was forced into premature retirement. He scoops right in, picks up E. Rod Ortiz Jr. And, and has taken Erod to the next level. Yeah, he absolutely has taken him to the next level. And Steve Rush and everybody he's ever had is, is just a tremendous talent, and he's able to get them in the position to showcase that talent. You think back, Edgar Prado, basically in the Hall of Fame because of Steve Rushing's mm -hmm. guidance. Then Ramon Dominguez, who will be a Hall of Famer. And Arad Ortiz, the way his career is going, he's on a trage trajectory to be a Hall of Famer as well. Now, David Jacobson, a third consecutive Naira training title, won it in 2012, tied last year in 2013, and won it outright this season with over 200 victories. In fact, David Jacobson, 133 wins when it was all said and done, earnings of over $6.5 million, a guy that comes at, at you with the numbers. He does with the numbers, but I thought this year we saw a little bit more of an emergence of quality throughout the stable, not just the cheaper horses, not just the claimers. I thought you had a really good mix of stakes horses, grade one type horses, mm -hmm. as well as the claiming horses that are the bread and butter of this game. Well, speaking of high-level horses, salute those amigos. I think probably the stable star winning a whole bunch of graded stakes on this circuit, and it does sound like looking ahead to 2015 with that soon-to-be five-year-old, soon-to-be in a few hours, we say happy birthday to all the thoroughbreds out there. The Golden Shaheen on the Dubai World Cup undercard might be where Salute Those Amigos is going next. Well, I think it's, it's a terrific th thing to try. It's a huge purse sprinting. It is back on dirt now. It's not synthetic. And the form he's in, why wouldn't you take a chance for that kind of money? Yeah, Jacobson, the kind of guy that can jump in and claim one and improve horses. He does really solid work with those older geldings as well. Gets a lot of them back to their better races. And 2015 will be bright. Of course, his dad, his late father, was a three-time consecutive leading trainer on this circuit. Although looking back, and I thought maybe three consecutive training titles might be almost a record, Guys like Gary Contessa, Gaspar Moschera, they had longevity, you know, riding that number one spot year after year. Well, and I think even if you go further back, Frank Martin, I'm sure, strung yeah, together Pancho, more, sure. Than, more than a few uh, <laughs> training titles, you know, legendary horsemen like that. Michael Dubb will be the leading owner for, uh, for 2014 on the Naira circuit. Essentially the uh, third consecutive, or I should say second uh, time Michael Dubb has achieved that honor. Won it in 2012, was second in 2013, and was 75 wins. He tops all owners, and again, he's got the numbers, and I'll tell you, you know, you, you, you noted Meg, uh, David Jacobson upgrading a stable's quality. I think we've seen that as well with Mike Dubb's uh, horses. Yeah, absolutely. As, as we're watching Condo Commando win the grade one spinaway, Tom Durkin's last call mm. as a race announcer. Um, 
I, I think the mark of, of greatness is consistency, and I think that's what you're seeing from all of the people we're talking about right now. And what Michael Dubb has done in making a comprehensive plan and being able to execute that plan has made him one of the leading owners, if not the leading owner, for several years now. Picks up horses at auction, can claim, and uh, was a big uh, benefactor early on of Anna House. Donated a lot of money and time, and we thank him for that. And he's a guy that's at the races year-round. Good stuff with the Michael Dove operation. As we get it back to this final day of racing on this circuit in 2014, couple of stakes. Headlined, of course, by race number eight. It's the Alex M. Rob and track announcer John Embriel. Towards the back of the pack, West Hills Giant goes for the lead with big business right alongside. And read the byline is now moving up to be a close up third after that slow start. Awesome Vision is next in fourth. FNX in fifth. Then it's Beauty in the Pulpit, followed at the rail by Gridley here. And the trailer is Sinistra. West Hills Giant has the lead here by a half length over Read the Byline. Big business sitting just off those front runners in third. Awesome Vision is next in fourth. FNX on the outside of Beauty in the Pulpit. Those two are right together. Then it's Gridley here and farther back, Sinistra. The quarter went in 23 and three-fifth seconds. West Hills Giant hounded here by Reed the Byline after a half and 47 and two with a half mile to the wire. West Hills Giant. And on the outside, read the byline. The two of them are now right together, going around the far turn. They've got three lengths on a big business in third. Another two to FNX, who's asked for a little more in fourth. Beauty in the pulpit at the rail, then awesome vision. And a Gridley here, way back, is Sinistra. The field is at the top of the stretch. West Hills Giant. Here's Big Business now moving up on the outside. West Hills Giant and Big Business. Then Beauty in the Pulpit. FNX read the byline has dropped out of it. A furlong to the finish. Big Business. Here's Beauty in the Pulpit driving up on the outside. Big Business and Beauty in the Pulpit. The two of them are right together as they come for the wire in the Alex M. Rob. It looked like Big Business got it. A photo finish. Big Business and beauty in the pulpit. Business has got a big heart. It's close, but he grinds out the win in the Alex M. Rob. He does, and I don't know if the margin of victory really tells the whole tale, Jason. It looked to me as though maybe he got to idle in a little bit, and then when the uh, runner-up, oh, read the byline, got, I'm sorry, it wasn't read the byline, um, Beauty in the Pulpit came alongside. He kind of bore down and went on again, and this horse is a gem of consistency. 11 wins now from 33 starts. He has thrived coming east, getting with trainer David Jacobson, who caught up with the MIG, in fact, after taking today's 36th Alex M. Robb. David, big business has been a, a model of consistency. You have to be very happy with him. Oh, it was a spectacular performance today. Well, he looked like he might get caught inside the 16th ball, but he really bore down late. Yeah, well, that was, you know, Rudy's horse was flying at the end. We're, we were getting worried there, but, uh, you know, big business. He just, he saw him coming. I think he felt him, and he just dug in a little bit harder. That's what Fernando said. He could, as soon as he felt that horse, he tried just, just that much harder, and that's the kind of horse he is. You had a tremendous year last year. You backed it up with another tremendous this year this year. So showing it was it was no fluke. It's got to be pretty satisfying for you. Oh yeah, this is a great ending to the year, and you know tomorrow we got to start all over again. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Rich. Always looking ahead at the racetrack. That's just the reality of the game. You win the Derby. You're looking ahead to the Preakness. Well, David Jacobson and all the horsemen here will be back at the barn tomorrow on January 1st, 2015. Well, that is the thing about racing. It's a never-ending cycle. It's not as though you win a Kentucky Derby and you go, hey, I'm going to Disney World. No, you're probably going home to ride <laughs> at your home track the next day. And it doesn't matter whether you get beat on nine favorites today as a jockey or a trainer or you win five races, you have to show up and do it again tomorrow. We need to credit Fernando Har, big business, and he's so game and shows up no matter if it's a two-turn race, a sprint, he's in grade one company. He's just a terrific, consistent gelding by Eddington. Fernando Har was very good, though, in today's Alex M. Rob is the winning rider. You now, something we talk about a great deal. He got his position going forward, and then those two horses on the lead uh, battled it out, and he was in the right position to take advantage of that. Let's move on as we're in the position to get it back to race number five, the co-featured $100,000 Bay Ridge. We have the Colts and Geldings in race eight. Well, here we go with the state bred Phillies and Mares in race five. And they're off. JC's American Dream. Little Rocket is there. Storied Lady now ranges up from the outside. 
And in between horses, there goes Carry Me Away. So it's Carry Me Away, Little Rocket, Story Lady on the outside. And Miss the Point is just in behind. And now moving up from fourth. Little Rocket has the lead over Carry Me Away. Miss the Point runs in third. Story Lady on the extreme outside in fourth. Miss Narcissus gets a good spot down at the rail in fifth. Break of two to a Hot Rendezvous in sixth. JC's American Dream runs in seventh. Dreaming of Kara is eighth. Royal Suspicion runs ninth. Flip Cup is tenth. A break of almost four to Maka, who trails the field in eleventh. And the field is midway up the back stretch. Big long shot, little rocket in front, three quarters of a length. Carry me away in second, and on the outside is Miss the Point in third. Miss Narcissist at the rail is now fourth by a half length. Story Lady alongside in fifth. The break of four to JC's American Dream, dreaming of Kara and Hot Rendezvous. Farther back, it's Flip Cup and Royal Suspicion, and Maka is still at the back. The quarter in 24 and 1, and the half mile in 48 seconds. There goes Miss the Point. Now to grab a narrow lead. Story Lady's on the outside, and down. Down at the rail is a little rocket. The field in the stretch now. Missed a point. Narrowly over Story Lady. Hot Rendezvous advances on the outside into third. Then Little Rocket and carry me away. Less than a furlong to the finish. It's Story Lady on the outside and missed a point down towards the rail. Story Lady now in front as they come for the wire. And it will be Story Lady to win the Bay Ridge Stakes. Missed the point, held second, a photo for third. Two straight wins for Story Lady, who we'll get to in just a second. Keep your eye on the number four, Maka, as we pick up the uh, start of the Bay Ridge from the gate. Yeah, she gets squeezed severely about eight or nine strides into the race and really compromised her chances, Jason. It, she did amazingly well to get in, back into the race. So she clipped heels there, stumbled, taken up basically out of the race, and rallied well to be third. You'd have to think without that incident at the start, she would have been very tough. And to you handle. talk about that comprehensive program of owner Michael Dubb. I mean, he perfectly just this New York bred filly who has spent pretty much just about every race in her career out of town and in Southern California. It looks like she is a nice addition to trainer Rudy Rodriguez's Belmont Park Shedro. But let's give a little credit to Story Lady, who's attacking the inner track lover, missed the point in deep stretch, and she'll run away for one of the good guys, trainer John Hurtler. A terrific old school horseman. John Hurtler knows how to get it done, works with a lot of horses that are either homebreds or horses that he trained uh, members of the family. And this filly is very, very good on the in a track. Now four victories from six starts on the inner track. Winning rider from the outside post, or second to last post if you will, Jose Ortiz, who this was I think the second of his four wins on the card, and a good job. I mean post number 10 going a mile and 70, a mile and a 16th on the inner track, that's a pretty tough place to start, right? It really is a tough place to start, and you, and you need some luck. Not only do you have to go forward to get your position, you got to find a gap somewhere, and certainly he did the job, but he had a lot of Philly under him, and that, that's a credit to John Hurtler as well. We're rocking and rolling here in this New Year's Eve edition of Aqueduct Insider. A lot more coming your way on the broadcast here on MSG+. Plus. A little breather, and the Mig and I are back in just a second. The new Big A opened up in late 1959, the brainchild of the late racetrack uh architect Arthur Froelich. They had dumped uh, over $30 million in renovations into the building then. We're still settled in and going strong with more improvements here. In fact, in my book, the Big A has never looked as good as it does now. It, it really does. It looks terrific. And not just here in our studios, all over the building. And it makes you feel good to come here. Not only is the racing, even though the weather's getting cold, is the, the racing's hot. The building looks very, very spruced up. 2015 Naira calendar on sale here, $5 tomorrow afternoon. We hope you join us. What could be a January 1st, a New Year's Day without thoroughbred racing at Aqueduct? In my mind, that doesn't exist, and we'll be running first race post, in fact, at 12.25 as we get you back to Wednesday's third race. It's hard to figure out what day of the week it is, and I'm sure you'll agree coming off vacation, but it is a Wednesday. It's race three. These are soon-to-be three-year-old Philly New York bred maidens, and Johnny I with the call. Now moves up to challenge, so it's ginned up, and Fenwick Hall heads apart. They've opened up two lengths on Majestic Jessica in third. Mohawk Lily's in between horses, and on the outside is Paradise Peak. The trailers are not about the nail, and Beating Heart Baby, a battle 
up front here between Jin Dup and Fenwick Hall. And the opening quarter was run in 23 and two fifth seconds as they begin the run around the far turn. Fenwick Hall on the outside pokes ahead in front. Jin Dup is down at the rail. Almost four lengths to Majestic Jessica in third. Beating Heart Baby is now moved up on the outside into fourth. Then it's Mohawk Lily, Paradise Peak, and not about the nail. The field comes into the stretch, and it's Fenwick Hall, the one to catch. Ginned up down at the inside is second. Majestic Jessica is gaining ground from third. Beating Heart Baby is fourth. They're inside the eighth pole. Down at the rail, ginned up trying to come on again, but here's Majestic Jessica on the outside. Majestic Jessica with a narrower advantage over ginned up as they come for the wire. Majestic Jessica the winner. Ginned up was second. Photo for third between Beating Heart Baby and the pace setting Fenwick Hall. Bruce Brown prepared. He ran two. Fenwick Hall, who had speed, kept ginned up company and then picked off everybody in deep stretch with Majestic Jessica. Yeah, and, and Bruce Brown has just done a tremendous job since he's gone out on his own. I thought he's had a terrific year. Another well-prepared horse and another rider that we really have just so privileged to have every day. Manny Franco's just been riding at a, such a high level, and it's really fun to watch these three young guys, and there's many more young guys, but the Ortiz brothers and Manny Franco. Philly by Roaring Fever over a very expensive first-time starter by Indian Charlie, the runner-up ginned up, who I think picking apart dynamics ran the best race of anybody. She, she cost 390 k for Wounded Warrior Stable and Gary Contessa. You can't help but think of Uncle Cy a year ago on the inner track. Yeah, absolutely. They buy good horses. They're not afraid to spend money, but they're getting their targeting the right kind of horses. It's the sensational six on a day. The pick six A had a carryover and B mandatory payout. We go back to Johnny I for the calls of one, two, four, six, seven, and nine. On the outside now, Birdstone kicks clear to lead by almost two. Norman's hero in second. Farther back, Humboldt Street and Canoe Club. Bert Stone with the lead as they come down for the wire. And the two to five favorite is going to get the job done in the opener. Bert Stone, two and a half lengths at the end. Norman's Hero was second. Then Humboldt Street and Canoe Club. Rode Rendezvous down at the rail. Rode Rendezvous on the outside. It's Dolce de Leche. Rode Rendezvous by ahead. Dolce de Leche all out as they pass the eighth pole. For the back, it's by Sheila. And Get Hot, Stay Hot is now coming on. They're inside the 16th pole. Here comes Get Hot, Stay Hot to take over the lead and win it. Get Hot, Stay Hot. Photo for second. Don't to the stretch. Here's speeding Comet on the outside. Drifting out there in the stretch. And power towards the rail. Inca Saint is third. Clifton Pleasure has moved up into fourth. And now they're at the 16th pole. And it's Empower and Speeding Comet hooking up again. Empower, Speeding Comet. Those two to the wire. Dead tight on the line. Empower or Speeding Comet. They battled it out for most of the mile and 70 yards. As Jubilant Vision continues to battle on down at the rail. Seven lengths back to Unrepented in third. Benny's Bullet leads by a neck. Jubilant Vision is second. Big break back to the rest of them. Benny's Bullet holding on to that narrow lead as they come for the wire. Benny's Bullet wins it. Jubilant Vision was second. Nine lengths back to a photo for third between Missy Bay and Unreal. Sharifa in front as they pass the 316th pole. Sharifa, the leader by almost five. On a snowy evening in second. Sharifa and Jose Ortiz with the lead as they come on down for the wire. The lead's down to three and a half lengths, but it will be Sharifa. And Jose Ortiz gets his third win today. On a snowy evening, a clear-cut second. Then Kate is a 10 and Graceful Gal. A four length lead here. X Max is now back running in second. Then Meeting House Road, Rock Jazz, and Black Friday Rush. False positive with the lead here. It's false positive in front by almost five. X Max trying to hold on to second. No doubt about the winner here and a big day for Jose Ortiz as he wraps up 2014 with four victories on the card. And it looked like X Max did hold on for second over Black Friday Rush. Rock that win in the last with false positive brought Jose Ortiz's Naira wins for the year up to 230. And he made more 
than 15 or just around 15.5 million in purse money. Gary Contessa, the winning trainer of that son of Tal Bacotti. No rest for the weary. He ran here last Friday. Yeah, but you see, I think sometimes, you know, we have this misperception that horses can't run that quick. I think it's all individuals. Some horses thrive on it. And the pick six was thriving today. They got up to the last race. Again, a mandatory payout. All but two were covered. And the pick six was, uh, was a hit today, all six winners. What did the pick six pay? 6323 and we hope you took down every single dollar in that sequence. We'll get right back at it tomorrow on January 1st, 2015. Uh, talking about some of the riders here at the Big A, Junior Alvarado uh, lost his mount out of the gate in race number six, the 1A stage name. The filly was okay, and it sounds like he's, he's doing all right. Yeah, no, he's fine. I actually went down to first aid and saw him. Um, according to his agent, Mike Slito, he will be riding tomorrow. He took off his mount today just as a precaution. You know, unfortunately, Junior's had some tough hits lately, but he looked fine in first aid, and I'm sure you'll see him in fine form tomorrow. And the stalwart veteran, Cornelia Velasquez, sounds like he's pretty much set to reappear early on in 2015. Talking with his agent, Billy Castle, it looks like January 7th is the target date for Cornelia to come back, so it's going to be good to have him back as well. And Mike Luzzi, unfortunately, still a ways off from coming back, but just so he knows we didn't forget about no. him. Mike Luzzi, another one of our uh, stalwart riders on the, on the men. Right oh, one of our favorites. We love the Luz. Let's check out the rider standings with another Wednesday on the inner track complete. What a day here at Aqueduct. What a gorgeous picture from that clubhouse turn. The main track, a little bit dirty, but the inner is in fine form, and Jose Ortiz off a of four back. He's your leading rider by good ways. And just look at the names here. Jose Ortiz, Franco, Ortiz, Cruz, Rodriguez. I don't think anybody there is over 22 I years don't old. Th yeah. Can any, are they, any of those guys legal drinking age? Let's move on to uh, trainer standings here. And David Jacobson did walk away with the victory in today's Alex M. Robb. And he's got nine. But Gary Gullo. He and Michelle Nevin are both on a, a pretty good runs. A really good run. Nice to see Gary having such great success, as well as Michelle, but Gary's horses are running extremely well. Yeah, and Michael Dubb, again, he's got the numbers, runs at least one or two horses every single day. Well, he's in the standings, the owner standings, but Rapoli stable, topping the list at four, and I know Mike's got a firster here by Indian Charlie on Friday that they like quite a bit coming up from Palmetto's. Well, it's nice to see people that are so dedicated to the game having that kind of success. And we're dedicated, that's for sure. We take a look at the claims as we uh, get ready to say goodbye for segment number two. A whole bunch of horses changed hands, including the winners of the first three claiming races on today's card. Like, trainers are handicapping well besides. <laughs> That's right. Speeding Comet, a six-way shake coming in from Kentucky, was pretty game in winning race number four over the layoff horse Empower, who was claimed off Kier McLaughlin by Linda Rice. As we take a look at the Empire State Building and we set our sights on the quarter pole. Time now for the Frost Giant New York Bread Standout. We are back on this Wednesday edition of Aqueduct Insider. We're looking for a good stallion for 2015. Well, we've got a son of Eddington named Big Business who was sensational in the Rob. Yeah, and, and one thing you like about Big Business, he shows up and he's all business every time. 11 victories now, 10 seconds, 5 thirds from 33 career starts. And I think consistency is the mark of excellence. Well, that's the uh, the key with Frost Giant. His horses are good early. They're good later in their careers as well. And to uh, breed to Frost Giant in 2015. And by the way, he's standing for $10,000. You can contact Eric Bishop, Eric at SunriseStallions.com. And Eric and, and the people with Frost Giant Limited uh, have been kind enough to A, bring us a replica of Anna House, and it looks terrific. No, the MIG did not build this over vacation. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and we're, we're having our first ever first ever raffle here on Aqueduct Insider to benefit two great causes, Anna House and the Permanently Disabled Jockeys. Yeah, I couldn't said it better myself and very generous gesture by the Frost Giant team. All right, and the deal is the, uh, well, you and I will each pick a, uh, an entry form. We've got about 30 to 35 entry forms in here, and the winner pays $2,500 to breed the Frost Giant, and that will be donated to either two Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund or Anna House, and the, and the Frost Giant people will match that for a total donation, 5000 each. Pretty good cause. So let's uh, jump right in, and we'll pull out our first sheet. And we have uh, Peter Daly of Upper Brookville, New York, and the mayor is Trust and Gold. So pretty good stuff with that. And really good stuff with that, and two good causes, and you're getting to a $10,000 stallion for a $2,500 donation. That's a pretty good deal. All right, jump right in, man. All right, let's, here's uh, number let's two get our for second the winner. Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. All right, here we go. The winner is 
Kirsten Morehouse of New York, and the mayor is Angel Wave. So we'll get two people ready to breed to Frost Giant. All right, $5,000 going to both Anna House and the Permanently Disabled Jockeys Fund. Good stuff with that. We thank everybody with Frost Giant Limited, and it's been fun having the Frost Giant State Bread Standout Star on this show over the last month or so. Good stuff, and congratulations to the two winners. Can't wait for that 2015 breeding season. Let's move on to the uh, the Thursday feature. It is January 1st. We have the affectionately as the uh, featured race anchoring the first card in 2015, and Belle Gallanty, the two-time grade one winner. Well, she's starting to get in some class relief here, isn't she, Jason, as she drops out of grade one type company. She does have an outside post. I think it benefits her because there is some speed to the inside, and I do think she does her best running close up to the pace, and I do think she will have an opportunity to get a good position. Competition runs pretty deep, though, in this edition of the Affectionate Lee, and you've got Penwith, one half of the Darley entry, one for Albatroni, one for Kira McLaughlin, and she's got a big pedigree and eligible to run well out of the Cumley. Yeah, she, she absolutely does, and she should be a filly that's forwardly placed. At all. I don't think she's the main speed. She should be forwardly placed, and Kira McLaughlin's horses have been running well for Artie Magnuson here at Aqueduct. Jimmy Toner's got Bowman and Dixie. She's been out running her odds in her last couple, the turn back the alarm, and, uh, and ran in the go for one, I think she's pretty dangerous, too. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I go back to this. I like to see horses that have had some success over the inner track. All right. Well, speaking of success and putting cash in your pocket on New Year's Day, it's Andy and Maggie with who to look for on January 1st. 2015 gets off on the right foot here at the Big A with a nice stake race, the affectionately. And it goes as our third race and features maybe one of the best claims of last year, the dual grade one winning Bell Gallanty, and she certainly is the horse to beat, but Beer will try to do. Not sure we can do it, but we'll try to do it. I like the 2B divided attention. A horse who raced in the slow pace comely on Cigar Mile last time. She had a very wide trip. I thought she actually ran very, very well before understandably fading late. She's got some talent. This is the right field for her to show it, and more importantly, I think she'll be the right price. It's all about divided attention against the favorite, Belle Gant Gallanty, for me and the affectionately, as we head out to Maggie. Thanks, Andy. Well, it's been a long time since we've been down here in the paddock for a Paddock Insider. But taking a look at the Thursday card, Happy New Year's to everyone, by the way, and happy birthday to the horses. And turning three tomorrow, air several fillies in the last race and I'm going to take a look at a second time starter coming off of a break and trying the dirt for the first time and that is Broken Border in here for trainer John Service. Now I am going against my best instinct in that I do think she's a better turf filly she has a pedigree to be that way Broken Val out of boundary damn but I just fell in love with her the first time I saw her. She's big, she's good looking, she's strong. I anticipate seeing the same kind of filly here in the paddock tomorrow and I think I think she might be able to overcome being on a surface that might not be to her liking. I just think she might be better than these Phillies after a pretty troubled yet promising first start of her career. So Broken Border tomorrow is your Paddock Insider. Guys. So Andy's taking down Belle Gallanty with one half of the Darley entry and Maggie in the nightcap tomorrow, January 1st, 2015. Likes a Philly going turf to dirt second time out. Good angle. I think it's a good angle. Horses learn a lot in their first start when they're getting their kick back. I think they gain a lot of conditioning. Have a happy and healthy MIG. Everybody out there, thanks for joining us. A fun show. We do it all again tomorrow. January 1st, New Year's Day, right here at the Big A. Have a safe New Year's Eve, and we're back at it tomorrow afternoon with the first race post of 1225. Okay.